Jane and I received an early Christmas gift this past week. It was not unexpected. We have been getting notice that this would happen. It was our grandson's Christmas pageant. And it was live streamed from Tampa. And um, we dutifully tuned in at 9 o'clock. And his whole elementary school participated in the pageant. Now he goes to a Christian school and they were biblically accurate and very particular about the story. In fact, they were comprehensive. It wasn't your typical Christmas story. But took in afterwards the wise men coming, which I thought was a bit early, but and but they also had two narrators throughout the pageant. And one of the narrators recited what you have before you, Canticle 15, which is entitled The Magnificat or the Son of the Song of Mary. It is a moment in time when Mary visits her cousin Elizabeth in Judea. And there, as she greets her cousin, she offers these words which have been enshrined as the Magnificat, the Magnificent. It is words that resonate always and is always associated with uh, the Virgin Mary. And here we have before you words that speak of something coming. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed, and the Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. It is a moment in time as we approach Christmas on this, the third Sunday of Advent. If you notice, the third candle is lit that is not purple. Today is Rejoicing Sunday or Refreshment Sunday or Gaudet Sunday, and it refers to being rejoicing as we approach the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we take a pause from the preparations to honor what will take place at the midpoint as we move forward past the midpoint of this season. And here we have words from a mother, a mother-to-be, a mother that had all the faith in the world. We often call Mary the Theotokos, the bearer of God. But in this case, I think she would prefer something more simply. She is a person of simple faith, of a trust in a God that she believes has blessed her and her life and that she will carry the Savior. It is those two things that moved on with her throughout her life, trust and faith. It is Mary, if you recall, that stands beneath the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. I can't imagine it, but a mother standing beneath the cross of her crucified son. And yet you get the glimpse of the depth of her character, of her faith, of the trust that she had it placed in God's power to do infinitely more for her than she ever dreamt, that he would do the impossible, and that she would bear a son, a son that would be the savior of the world. 
keep that in mind as we move forward because there's two other interlocking stories that relate to Mary. If you recall, it is Mary that goes to Judea to visit her kinswoman, Elizabeth. And she's with child as well. And he is none other than John the Baptist. The two are only six months apart. And so we have the story in the gospel today of John being greeted by the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Levites' representatives. They come to, Be they come to a place called Bethany. And there, it feels as if they're interrogating John. And they asked several questions of John. Are you the one? And he is very quick to say, it is not me. Are you Elijah? I am not him. Then they say, are you the prophet? Which refers to Moses one of the great prophets of the day. And he says, I am not. And they go on, asking for answers from a man they thought had all the answers. In fact, the last question they asked, if you're not the Messiah, if you're not Elijah, nor the prophet Moses, why are you baptizing? Why are you baptizing? And he says, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me, and I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. He's very clear about who he is and who he is not. In our own lives, are we as clear about who we are and who do we belong to as John did in this tense moment in his life? He was not about to say anything that he wasn't, but he was a prophet. He went before. And in that time in which he baptized, he was searching too. He was searching for the Christ. For most of my life, long before I was ordained, I always assumed that John the Baptist knew it was Jesus automatically. They were cousins, six months apart, were religiously astute, perhaps not moving in the same circles, but I always had the impression that John the Baptist knew it was Jesus. And then we have the third story in this trilogy. It revolves around John and also Jesus. And the third story has John in prison, languishing in prison by King Herod. His ministry is over. He has done his job. And yet, at that moment in time, languishing in prison, he asked his disciples to go and speak to Jesus personally. And his question that he was to be delivered by his disciples to Jesus was, when they got to Jesus in Capernaum, they asked, on behalf of John, are you the one? Or must we look for someone else? For you see, John was still searching. Perhaps as we search in our hearts for the truth,
over and over and over again that we not take in by false prophets, that we not take in by the world's standards. And so we're always, I think, in that mode of searching, always discovering and rediscovering the Christ within us. And so John had that wherewithal. Even in prison, to get an answer. And then there is Jesus' response. And it's telling for each of us as it was for John. Here's what Jesus says. Go back to John, he said. Go back to John and tell him The blind see again, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised to life, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. And happy the person who does not lose faith in me. That is the message on the third Sunday of Advent. The child in the manger is now the full stature of God incarnate. That child in the manger that we worship and adore is the person that can say, I am that person that gives us freedom. I'm the person. that looks out for the poor and the hungry and the lost. I am the person that forgives your sins. I am the person that gives new life. I am the person that is not out there as much as in here. And so we come to the third Sunday of Advent. And I keep in mind the trust and the faith of Mary. And I keep in mind how John was able to know who he was and what he was after. He was after the Messiah. And then we have Jesus of Nazareth who says in part, I came for you. I've come for the lost and the lonely and the poor and the oppressed. I've come for the blind of spirit I've come for a world that needs the grace of God to be placed in their midst. And so the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ is not all that far from the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. The two meet in the person of Jesus of Nazareth, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 